Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. First of all, if you are new here, if this is the first video you are watching from me, I post new book reviews almost every single day. So if you're looking for some reading inspiration for the summer, then maybe stick around. Now let's talk about the book that I'm going to be reviewing today, and that is volume nine in a series that I have been rereading and loving, and that is no matter how I look at it, it's you guys' fault, I'm not popular. This is by Niko Tanagawa, which I believe is a combination of two people who have come together to work under the name Niko Tanagawa, and this is what the cover looks like. These volumes I feel like are a little bit on the thinner side, but don't worry, plenty happens in this series. As I mentioned, this is a reread for me. I actually already read this series back in 2021, but I only made it to about volume 16 before I wound up moving, changing library districts, losing all my holds at that library, having to restart. So I kind of fell off the wagon and I want to finish the series or get as far as is out in English. So I am starting over and rereading the series all the way through. I'm going to assume if you're clicking on a video of volume nine, you do not care if I reference things that happen in volumes one through eight. This is your warning in case you don't want to know or be spoiled about what happens in previous volumes, but I am going to reference that in this video. So, volume nine. We're still following our main character, Tomoko. Tomoko appears on the front cover in, I think, all of the volumes up to this date. Here she is right here. She is a high school girl trying to live her best life. She went into high school thinking that she was going to kill this. She played a ton of video games playing as a high school girl. She thought she was going to get the boyfriend, have the friend groups, do the stereotypical high school things. However, Tomoko struggles with some stuff. For example, she's not very socially self-aware. She's not very socially aware. She struggles with social anxiety. She struggles with anxiety in general. She probably has a touch of depression. She's very awkward. She's very embarrassing. She's a teenage girl. It's a very realistic depiction of what being a teenage girl feels like. You are so in your head, so worried about how other people perceive you, and you tend to do a lot of defense or coping mechanisms when having to confront any flaw about yourself. Tomoko is now in her second year in volume nine. She has been struggling to make friends. She doesn't really fit in, but She's in year two and she's trying. Actually, if you go watch my review of volume eight, maybe you already have, you know that I'm talking about this school trip, which she is still on in the first half of this volume. So Tomoko takes her school trip and on the school trip, this is kind of a turning point for Tomoko and her social career of sorts. In or on this school trip, she's forced to be a group leader by a teacher who kind of has a heavy handed approach in trying to get Tomoko out there. And she has to take on this role. She's put with other people who either didn't fit in with the group or don't have a group. And it's just, it's the change that she needs to kind of put two and two together and be a little bit more social. So in my memory, if my memory serves, of the way the whole story goes. This class trip is a turning point for Tomoko in which she finally starts to grow a little bit as a person. Now this series is a slow burn in the sense that Tomoko takes a long time to grow. This is not one of those books where Tomoko goes on a class trip, has a deep discussion with her, with the girls that she's on the trip with, has a wonderful night, and then becomes a a beautiful and refined and never awkward again and perfectly funny and with a great group of friends high school girl of her dreams that doesn't happen because this is a more realistic approach where the growth is slow and continual but we're starting to see the growth being there i think one of the first things i notice when i pick up this volume is the fact that tomoko looks a lot less stressed and a little bit more comfortable with herself on the cover than she has in some of the previous volumes of course she's still socially awkward she still does a lot of interesting or dumb things, at least from my perspective. She still has a lot of the anxiety. She's still very self-centered in the fact that she thinks everyone is thinking about her and how awkward she is. She's overthinking everything. She still has all of these, but she's growing ever so slightly and we're starting to see the payoff of this growth. The authors even acknowledge this in the back of the book. It says Tomoko has gotten just a little bit better at conversing with her classmates. She's starting to talk to people. She's starting to be invited to lunch. She has a sports festival. It doesn't go as horribly as it could have gone, it could have gone a lot worse. And slowly but surely, we're starting to see Tomoko make those social connections that are so important. Volume nine, actually, I would say like, just the jump from volume seven to volume nine, going from seven, eight, nine, and reading all of those, I feel like is watching some of this growth all come together. All these experiences, all these situations, Tomoko is growing and all this growth is finally starting to pay off subtly. I feel like that's maybe one of the things with growth is 
at the very beginning of growing in any sort of way, whether you're working out or starting to eat healthier or trying to grow as a person, maybe with having more patience, or you could pick anything. When you first start, there's going to be no change. On day one, there's going to be no change. Day one that you start running, there's gonna be no change. Day one that you decide that you don't wanna have road rage anymore, no change. But it's it takes a while for the, the incremental little daily changes to really add up to a point where other people start seeing the changes. And maybe even for you to start seeing the changes. And that's where Tomoko is, is where is she's been doing little tiny things, sometimes not intentionally. Again, this isn't like a linear straight path where she's been doing a little bit every single day. She's just been kind of bumbling and experimenting through life the way that teenagers do. And she's slowly starting to figure things out. She's starting to make those connections that are really important, that all humans want. Humans want to be seen, recognized, connected. At least I would argue that probably most humans want to be those three things. And Tomoko has kind of been on the outside and kind of socially isolated for the last couple of volumes. And we're starting to see all of this pay off. So for those of you who are reading the series, maybe you're earlier in the series, volume three, volume four, and you're thinking this is really dark and not very funny. The humor part may be just subjective. I thought some of the parts were funny even in the darker volumes where Tomoko's really struggling with her social isolation, her loneliness, and her anxiety. But the series is starting to take a little bit of a lighter turn around this time. And in my memory and in my reread, I am finding this class trip to kind of be a turning point. She's made some connections and using these connections that she has, she can build going forward further connections, deeper connections, more connections with her classmates. And we see that as the class trip turns into the sports festival in volume nine, we see those connections kind of pay off. So overall, volume nine, I think volume eight is really the inflection point, but volume nine, we're starting to see the growth and the continue, continue evolution of Tomoko as a high school girl, but maybe a more realistic high school girl than some of the escapist fantasies that are sometimes presented in manga. I really enjoyed volume nine. I think if you're reading this series and you've liked everything thus far, you'll probably like volume nine. If you're cheering for Tomoko to become the person that you know she can be, if you just like watching her embarrassing escapades, then you'll probably like this. If you think she's awful embarrassing, then you might like it because she's getting ever so slightly a little bit less awkward and embarrassing. If you are cringing because you remember everything bad that you said and did in middle school because didn't we all do embarrassing things in middle school, you probably will still have to deal with that. But volume nine overall, I highly recommend. If you have any thoughts, opinions, feelings on the series thus far, on volume nine, on Tomoko as a character, or if you have any suggestions of manga series that you think I would like and I should read next, please put them in the comments below. I love to hear them. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.